yeah, there's some evidence. And I think, you know, coming across this evidence, reading it and trying to, you know, make sense out of it does cause a bit of disruption to the way that you think. It's first of all, wait, that's not what I thought it was, so I'm going to push back on that. Yeah. And then as you begin to think about it, hey, wait a minute, there's so much evidence to say that this is correct. Um, maybe I need to change my tune on this. Well, at the same time, he takes to task what he calls the progressophobes. In other words, right. the those who fear progress because it will it will create unanticipated consequences that will ultra, ultimately destroy humankind. Here's a good example. <laughs> the the whole idea of uh, of industrialization mm-hmm. and, and uh, uh, how, especially in terms of carbon footprint, the whole idea that those things right. that have really lessened poverty, and this isn't just in a few countries, it is now globally – in fact, countries are more like, likely to be prosperous than to be poverty-stricken. Right. Whereas if you look back in the United States at around the turn of the century, the, the percentage of people who had any prosperity at all was very small. Now, globally, that percentage is, has increased vastly and it continues to be in, increasing. However... Okay. At the same time, you have this issue with a tremendous carbon footprint, and that seems to be increasing and creating climate change and that kind of thing. And that's something that's that's an issue out there that that really needs to be given some thought and actually some action. So, but he but he says that the answers there are like. Very similar to the answers to uh, lack of longevity, which and that those answers lie in science and technology. In other words, the Enlightenment. Yeah, which uh, evidently started uh, the first paper. I think I read in one of the chapters that was 1785, the, yeah. the, the uh, topic about Enlightenment in the 1700s. So, yeah, I think also there's just this. Um, this claim in the book about the a pushback, uh, particularly in things like ideologies and political and even religion, that there's a there's a idea of belonging to a group and believing the the sort of the credos, the the different um, uh, guidelines that you should believe if you're in a particular group, and that keeps you from accepting some of the things about progress and so forth so you may disagree with some because of the group that you're in at the same time i i sort of read that with a little bit of amusement and and i i'm always amused i I love to read pinker i think he's a wonderful writer but i'm always amused at his writing because at the same time his his point i think is well if you have these dogmatic religions or quasi-religions or ideologies that prevents you from buying into the whole enlightenment thing then you're really you're really working against humankind mm. and at the same time I'm thinking yeah but uh hey bro you have uh your belief in science technology and the enlightenment and as I look at it it sort of reads like I hate to say it, a religion. So, yeah. you know, there's an irony there. Be careful Although, where you point the finger. There may be more <laughs> pointing back at you, as they say. Uh, but that's not to say that he that those points are are off base. But right. but he he also has an ideological approach, and it's the the uh, the total belief in uh, the can do science will solve all issues and boy, but he's got a lot of data to back it up. Yeah. I I found it interesting that, um, it was about being rational a lot, uh, in several chapters, they talked about just rational thinking can help you through the problem. What is your best option in this moment? Uh, and also taking that onto a grander scheme for some of the problems we have worldwide, but yeah, you you can solve things in that way, and certain political beliefs may interfere with that. Yeah. So I mean, he made the early on. I think he he made the push for more education, better education. What'd you think about that idea of what how he was talking about you in a way 
uh, you're just not educated enough if you can't use ration, uh, rational thinking and and uh, uh, and figuring out problems. It's, it's sort of through a rock there at education as we know it. Well, it goes back to the discussion I was having with our our contractor this morning, the the internet contractor, and the the idea that what really has a tremendous effect on what students do as far as behavior at school. Right. is by educating them. And the, the longer I was in it, the more I came to believe this. It, it's almost counterintuitive, but I really strongly believe that the more you showed students what an outcome would be from a behavior that wasn't desirable, the more a, a student would say, you know, I, I just think I, I need to do better. And you would see a a drop in Say undesirable behaviors, fighting, sure. uh, disruption of class, that kind of thing. And mm-hmm. there are other things that feed into that too, but just the fact that you sit down and discuss with with uh, a student what the outcomes of his or her behavior is going to be uh, has a an incalculable effect on that behavior.